Now I have to be funny. I was going to be serious and deep. Um, so the talk today is called Unleashed. Um, and it's really about the peril, the power, the potential of the ADHD mindset. Um, and I'm going to start with a question. And the question is very simple. The question is, why am I here? I ask that every morning. Uh, I'm here because at the age of 47, I discovered that I'd been living in a wrestling match my entire life with an invisible opponent. And the problem was I didn't know I was in a wrestling match with an invisible opponent. I thought this was what life was like. Sometimes it was really good, and then sometimes it wasn't. It was what I thought normal for everyone. It wasn't. It was my normal. So to be able to suddenly see this opponent that I've been wrestling with was amazing. Very existential moments followed. For, I started to discern all the ways that I'd been sabotaging myself, or it had been sabotaging me. And now I could see why I struggled so hard with very simple things everyone else could do, and yet could do other things that nobody else seemed to. And I just assumed, I better not charge much for my writing, because anyone could write this kind of comedy. But I also started to see that the struggle had been part of my success, and I'd incorporated it in. But it is disorienting at age 47 to discover that everything I know about myself, my quirks, my likes, my dislikes, the things I hate, the things I love doing, that they have all been impacted by this. Oh, thank you. It doesn't be slide. Be very ADD moment. Uh, so I could see where I struggled and even why I soared. They'd all been affected by this hidden saboteur. So I go from being a comedian to suddenly I'm a mental health advocate. I'm an educator. I go from oblivious to aware and then extremely aware because I got interested. And when people with ADHD get interested, we are unstoppable. So this is a story of transformation, of ongoing for me, for everybody in my life, and for somewhere between 8 and 10 million people so far around the world. I'm going to be quoting some statistics as I go along. I won't cite the sources. These are from the studies that the experts I trust say are trustworthy, and they have 4,000 studies now on ADHD to back or to choose from. The term, I'm going to use either ADHD and ADD. I'll use them interchangeably. You could argue there's a difference. The official is ADHD, and then there's two subtypes. Um, but so some people have the H. That's the difference, H. The H stands for hyperactivity and impulsivity. Restlessness, driven, on the go, impatient, line up at the ATM, going crazy. Some people have that. Some, mostly women, or tends to be women, don't. It's all good. By the way, you now know more than I know when I started out on this journey, when I was first diagnosed. My journey actually begins right here in Don Mills, 1950s. I'm growing up, went to the school that's a three minute walk from here. It was a happy childhood, but I found school to be awful and it was not particularly fond of me. My public school report cards read like a checklist of ADHD symptoms taken right out of the Diagnostic and Statistic Manual. Fidgets does this, rather play with his toys. It's hilarious. I didn't know much about it. Nobody knew anything about it. It was actually called minimal brain dysfunction back then, which isn't a bad name for it. At university, when I finally made it, I took physics because I didn't know what to do with my life, and that was my highest mark in school because Mr. Pickering was a great teacher. When I got to university, my marks in the easy courses, optics, 54, 58, the harder courses, quantum mechanics and relativity, 75, 80. My art selectives, painting, film, 90, 94. Never clicked I'm in the wrong course so that you could make a living doing some of these other things. My painting and draw, the stuff I submitted was amazing. As I say, when we're interested, we're unstoppable. The second year there at Waterloo, I was struggling. I didn't know what the signs were for depression. But I did know I was not going to make it through four years of this. It was a year and a bit in, uh, and I went to student counseling, and I switched from a four-year honors degree, which would lead somewhere to a three-year general degree, which would allow me to sweep the cyclotron if I graduated. 
And I didn't think I was gonna, and I did, and I still have nightmares that I don't have enough credits. Settling for less is very common. Then I got the perfect job. This is me doing a Monty Python pose at the Science Center just down the road here. I was a demonstrator. I made people's hair stand on end. I froze bananas with liquid nitrogen and nailed things in and everyone got, I set things on fire with a 40 foot laser, including one time my thumb. Anybody else ever seen a flame shoot out of their thumb? It's very cool. So I had the perfect job. I created programs, plays, exhibits. The only downside, staff meetings. Every second Thursday, two hours of sitting in a boardroom while they droned, and then we'll hear from George, and then after that, I think, Chris, <coughs> you're going to say something, and so on, and so on. And I'd, I'd be off in la-la land, creating action scenarios of commandos smashing through the window and me firing. I'm like 26 years old. I'm having fantasies of a five-year-old because I'm bored, or I'd fidget under the table doing magic tricks. We now know actually fidgeting really helps people with ADHD to focus and listen and take things in. It was a great job. It was interesting. It was stable. There was a pension. It was a government civil service job being funny in front of thousands of groups. And after four years, I got bored and I left. And I went into Canadian show business. Now back then, in the late 70s, Canadian show business was two things, Wayne and Schuster. And that was it. I don't know. What was I thinking? My mom kept asking, and I couldn't explain because I didn't know I had ADHD. Can I just get my water? Thanks. Um, I didn't know I had ADHD. Now I understand why I left, or why I, I felt restless and wanted to move on. Thank you, darling. I can call her darling, that's my wife. <laughs> One way of seeing the ADHD brain is that it's half asleep. And so, well, most people are normal and alert and awake, and then something happens, an alarm goes off, and they go up here. ADHD people are like this, and then the alarm goes off, and we wake up to what's normal. You see people running into a burning building to rescue people, ADHD. There are certain fields where we source. Stock traders, billions of dollars, ADHD. Show business, ADHD. There are fields where we absolutely soar. So I, w I am calmer and clearer standing here right now than if I had to sit and go over a contract to appear to stand here and talk to you. Reading through, nightmare for me. That's why so many actors have agents. But I did very well, actor, writer, director. I did four different series. They were very successful. Everyone was something I was interested in. Um, I did 700 episodes of radio and television, writing, performing, often directing, sometimes producing. 700 episodes. As I say, when we're interested, we're awesome. The creativity is amazing. I've had standing ovations, which is kind of cool. It's like a multiple orgasm at work. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've also bombed now and then, which is more like the erectile dysfunction of show business. And there's no blue pill, although a lot of people I know ended up trying a white powder. Uh, I was so frightened of drugs. I already knew my brain was weird. I just was, those ads, you know, this is your brain on drugs. Fried egg. I just, I'm never drinking because I, I suspected if I started, I probably wouldn't stop. Same with drugs. All my friends, I pulled them out of the bushes and so on. My drug was work. Somebody would call with work and I'd say yes. Somebody called and said, if you do some work, you might get some work. I'd say yes. The result was I won awards, acclaim, and admiration from other people. But for me, I always felt still like an underachiever. Yeah, I can do that, but my taxes are late again. That's a 150 buck fine that could have gone to my daughter's education fund. What kind of stupid father am I? You're a grown freaking ad, and on and on and on. With a mind that never stops. One year I was co-writing, co-starring, and directing the Red Green Show, and writing and hosting Prisoners of Gravity. At the same time, I had Christmas Day and half of Boxing Day off, and no time for the routine things like taking care of the house, uh, taking vacations, managing finances, doing paperwork, seeing friends, seeing family. And if you'd asked me, are you gonna be one of those fathers who misses their kids growing up? I would have said, oh God, no, because I love my kids more than anything. And I do. And yet I had found a drug, which was work, 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 work. I found another drug, a stimulant medication called caffeine, six cans of cola a day. Then the year 
2000, my marriage ended, very common. And at the same time, my son got into a gifted school program, the kind I never did. Five weeks into this, they called and said, there's a problem. He hasn't done any of his homework, we've just realized. I was so upset. I, um, the school called with this, so I went and we found out why his homework had not been handed in. It's because he'd never done homework all through public school. He would get it done in class and then end up playing on some of the computers at the back of the room. When the teacher would ask, why isn't it done? He got creative, which we're very good at, but he didn't know how to do it. So they do some testing just to confirm, yes, he is gifted, but he also has ADHD of the predominantly inattentive subtype. Being a good father, which I can be at some points, I say, wait a minute, let me see this list of symptoms, and I read all the way through it. Well, I don't, because I have ADHD. I skim quickly through it, and I go, well, if this is ADHD, then I have ADHD. And in very short order, I find myself in the office of a specialist, an ADHD specialist on Eglinton. Lovely guy, has ADHD himself, and we start going through the checklist of symptoms, and I start seeing my life laid out before me. Doesn't seem to listen. Yeah, I think my first wife said that. Impatient, difficulty waiting their turn, lineups, heavy traffic, blurts out answers before, yeah, because people talk slowly, doesn't follow instructions. I look at the picture in the box. IKEA gives you pictures. I don't even bother with the pictures and have to reassemble it. Lots on the go. What's wrong with that? Oh, yeah, not much finished. Tons of stuff on the go, never finished. Walk, uh, ongoing, ongoing, ongoing. Sometimes I'm able to hyperfocus, writing, doing comedy. It is amazing at middle age to discover your entire life is a list of, list of symptoms. It's not. There's a lot of other aspects to me. But it was startling how all of these different traits managed to impact me. And we'll just skip through these. Feeling of underachieving, yeah. Needs to pace. I kept pulling the phone off the desk. We finally got this long cord and then cordless phones. That was great. Procrastinates totally. Overly emotional. Oh, and physical emotion, things like spikes from the, the hair from your haircut going down your neck, so on. So I'm freaked out to discover that all of these aspects of ADHD are what I had considered normal life. They're actually a disorder. It's also been described, I think there's a better description, executive function disorder. If you think about what executives do at a large car company, that's not me. But you need these traits, checking details, tracking, budgeting, prioritizing. You need that so that every Toyota Corolla that comes off is consistent, the same, and uniform. Where you need me is in the de design department. Rick, can you come up with 27 different ways or things we could add to a car to make it more interesting? Sure. If you've seen Mad Men, you've seen people with ADHD at work, idea, idea, idea. We need 30 of these, right, got it. So what happens with ADHD is if you don't know what's going on, kids, it's very well diagnosed. It may even be overdiagnosed in some jurisdictions. With adults, 80% of us still don't know what's going on. 80% are still undiagnosed. The cost estimate is that it's about seven billion a year. There's probably over half a million people in the province dealing with this. Anyway, we find ways to self-medicate. For me, it was work, caffeine. Um, my parents smoked. Everybody on Mad Men smokes. There's all these different things. Dr. Hallowell calls it, we find ways to scratch the itch. And we can even get addicted to good things. There are so many Olympic athletes. We interviewed Greg LeMond, the first American, to win the Tour de France, the only one now that we know about Lance. Untreated, it will ruin your life. And that's, yeah, it's just a problem with focus. No, 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 it will ruin your life. We have two, three, four times the rate, depending on what study, of divorce, being fired, dropping out, bankruptcy, it's unbelievable, the costs of this, the damage it does to families. And because it runs in families, it is genetic. They've now identified 20 of the suspect genes 20 genes, and there's probably many more, and not everybody has them turned on, so we all look a little different. MRIs are showing the brain works differently and fires differently. Not badly, just differently. When I told people about what was going on, the reaction I got when I said, I've got ADHD, the reaction was dismissal and denial, which was infuriating. You just need to try harder. I am freaking trying as hard as I can, and nobody got it. Nobody got it. You're on national television. Yeah, so is Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
turned the History Channel. Hitler's on every, it doesn't matter. I was so mad, I wanted to prove everyone wrong. And my friend Patrick McKenna, who plays Harold on the Red Green Show and was on Traders, he knew he had ADHD, we'd talked about it. He'd never been diagnosed, his son had. I said, do you wanna do a comedy special about it? Turned into a documentary, he said, sure, absolutely because he has ADHD, he'll say yes to everything. His wife, who does not have ADHD, Janice, who's actually the star of the program, said, okay, we'll do this. It was called ADD and Loving It, and it ran on global television uh, just down the road here on Barbara Green. We interviewed doctors, specialists, and nine of them all together, and included stuff that we heard from three or more experts. Patrick got diagnosed on camera, and the good news was he had ADHD. And the program aired as part of a series of documentaries on Global, got huge ratings, two, three times when anything else they ran in that time slot. Huge need, a lot of people going, hmm, and checking. The big shock for me was the reaction to people. Dear sirs, I won't get this exactly right, but it's close. Dear sirs, I have been working with my lawyer on my third divorce and fourth bankruptcy. And he told me that the paperwork would be wrapped up in under two weeks. So I'd set aside next Saturday, and I got some pills and some very fine scotch, and I was out of here, because I had decided I could not figure it out. And I was tired. And then I happened to catch your program, and I flushed those pills down the toilet, and I was pounding on my doctor's door the next morning, demanding to be seen, and he gave me some different pills. It's been a week. Everything has changed. Thank you. I'm a comedian, and now we're saving lives. Very it's, it's an amazing moment. Now we knew we were creating, and this was that's one of many. We were creating a website, and we just we once we got this reaction, we just made it bigger and bigger. The website ended up it has more stuff going on than Epcot Center has. It's amazing. We've been interviewing all kinds of experts, creating more videos on all these different aspects of ADHD, and we just kept going. This was supposed to be a one-off program. It has turned into a full-time. Uh, mission, I don't know, crusade, enterprise. We wrote a book, 155 Ways ADHD Shows Up in Your Life, and uh, everything from you have too many speeding tickets to, anyway, I got the CAMH Celebrity Award. I was appointed to the Order of Ontario, with the side order of New Brunswick, I believe is the thing. I spoke at schools, and, helped, and it is astounding, the number of people out there, the number of families that are dealing with this. And what's cool is, there's so much that can be done about it. So we have all this going on. We have videos on all kinds of different subjects, on sleep and coaching and holistic solutions, including one on careers. What is the perfect career for ADHD? Because we can be hugely productive when we're in the right job. And I found the right job. It's also really good, for example, when our tasks are broken up. Patrick's son is in the military. Make your bed. Yes, sir. Go over there, climb up that mountain. Now what, now what, now what, now what, now what? Squirrel, next, what? what do you want, what do you want? I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. We can be awesome in these fast paced things. That's why we're the ER doctors. The ER doctor comes in, he's not the family doctor. How have you been for the last six months, it's, or year? It's, what do we got, broken leg? I don't care what his name is, it's saved. I'm here with next, what do you got? Bang, bang, bang. We are sprinters, we're not marathoners. You need a holistic approach to deal with this. Medication makes a huge difference. Anybody who's ever had a cup of coffee or needs three in the morning knows the difference a stimulant can make with focus. But there are all kinds of interesting accommodations that can be made in an office. Simple things like walls up or uh, uh, a bubbling stream to eliminate the noise, um, having a supervisor, a salesperson, a guy, one of the coaches, worked for one of the big American companies, traveled to all the sports stadiums, and he, uh, said to his boss, didn't say ADHD, because that'll get you fired very often, or at least passed over for a promotion. Instead, he said, I, if you could give me someone to do my invoicing, because I'm so far behind, I could do double my sales. They hired someone at half the salary or a third to do his invoicing. He went out and tripled his sales, because that's what he was really good at. More than paid for. So we thrive with structure, knowing clearly what we're supposed to be doing, and it's very situational. This me talking and blabbing on and on, and I'm already close to time. 19, uh, and I'm a third of the way through, but no, I'm actually, uh, I'm more than, but the, uh, this is great. On the other hand, 
when my child is trying to tell me something and then we're sitting in a restaurant and there's sports, those TVs going, and I'm distracted, what is my daughter gonna think? She's gonna think, I wonder if dad's low on norepinephrine and dopamine, or is she gonna think, dad's not really that interested in anything I have to say. That's why knowing is so powerful. You go, ah, got it. It's still hard, but we made simple adjustments. We don't go to sports bars. We go to the, and when we're in Don Mills visiting my mom, we go to the Swiss chalet. It's just, it's quiet older people. There's no distractions. <laughs> and this is true of everyone. We play to our strengths. When we do play to our strengths, especially with ADHD, we can be, uh, the transformation's astounding. This is why I write short skits, not long screenplays. Six months on the chance one in a hundred this is gonna get made, or I could sit down and write eight skits for the Frantics or the Red Green Show or History Bites. Guess what I'm gonna go do? I don't have the patience to work out story arc and so on and so on, it's just not gonna happen. Once I knew what was going on, I let go of all my screenplay ideas and I had to follow them and they made me feel guilty. God, I should, you know, I love Billy Wilder movie, la 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 la, all gone. I'm not gonna do that. We're very entrepreneurial and I'll show you some names later or it, as I'm getting close to the end and we can be calm in a crisis. As I say, as somebody said, when it's routine and boring and calm, we're in crisis. Come on, get on with it, get on with it. Why is she taking so long at the ATM? But when there's a crisis, bank robber. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step out. I don't think he's, and we're great in a crisis and there are lots. It's been said it's a good news diagnosis. I don't know about that, but it is good news knowing what's going on, suddenly realizing. Michael Phelps, a swimmer, Ty Pennington. Like many people with ADHD, 40% have a learning disorder like dyslexia. This is my favorite. Uh, Paul Orphelia started Kinko's. Who else but somebody with ADHD says, you know what we need? A printing house that's open at three in the morning when you need 600 copies of a 20-page color report to hand in at eight in the morning or you're fired. <laughs> now, some of these people you'll see here are people who were diagnosed by just their biography and so on. Some, Salvador Dali and Picasso, others, Adam Levine from Maroon 5 have come out about it. Uh, Terry, Terry, but the name has come out. Elvis diagnosed later. Zoe Deschanel is open about it. So it's, uh, Cam, the boys from uh, Green Day. Uh, he said, Bob, Bobby Joe, is that his name? I said, Billy Joe Armstrong said, we all have it. So the thing I want to leave you with is that the suffering is avoidable. 75% of the core symptoms can be eliminated with a holistic treatment plan. You don't want to lose all of this, but you want to lose it when it's impairing. And that was a study done in Finland, I think. This is a worldwide phenomenon, and it's not just the internet, and it's not sugar, and it's not red dye. The first descriptions by doctors were in the 1700s, and more in the 1800s. And these doctors were all Germans. <laughs> so not doing what they're supposed to do. <laughs> they are messes. They got up and went and looked out the window as I was talking, because they had an idea. They've just come up with the next Harry Potter book, and they've wandered off to create it. The other thing about this is the potential is enormous because as you get one aspect of it, one challenge handled, it help, makes it easier to handle all the challenges. Poor listening doesn't just show up with my daughter, it shows up in meetings, it shows up in my marriage, it shows up on phone calls, important phone calls or not important phone calls and so on. So the transformation can be astounding. A doctor told us about a janitor in a public school whose kids were diagnosed. Of course, he was then checked and yes, He'd been diagnosed as a child or labeled as having very low IQ. Turned out he had a genius IQ and ADHD up the wazoo so that when someone said something, the teacher said a question, if it was more than 10, eight words long, five words long, as my sentence is right now, that kid tuned out. He didn't remember what, where they were starting. He lost it. He started a holistic treatment plan, including medication. He went back and finished high school. He went to university. He became a lawyer. Think about that, a lawyer. What a tragedy, another lawyer. It's just <laughs> another life. Wait, no, sorry, that's, that's it. But that is what is possible. For me, I'm way more productive with less uh, And I've made all kinds of small changes and big changes. Medication is great, it's like an inhaler. When you need it, it's there. When you don't, you don't. 
The documentary that we did was called ADD and loving it. Question mark, exclamation mark. And that was designed to get people who thought ADHD wasn't real to watch and the people who knew ADHD was real. What, loving it? How could I love it? And they were gonna watch and everybody did watch and it changed lives. That question mark, exclamation mark. At the end, Patrick says, this journey has taught me that you can't love your ADHD, but you can have ADHD and have a life you love. And that's all anyone wants. And for most adults, a career is a big part of what makes them feel productive, makes them realize they're a contribution. It's their way of contributing to society in whatever they do. And that's the potential you have of these people, of those of us with this, is understanding it, getting the person who, oh, I don't want to actually consider they might have it, and our website's wonderful for that. It takes away the fear, it brings in laughter, and as somebody was just saying, I love it, I love it, I love it. So that's the potential. Anyway, you have a day ahead of you hearing about disabilities, but I want you to keep focusing on what the strengths are, what the abilities might be, because you running businesses, that's what matters to you. And so what if there is a potential boardroom material or head of a department or creative department and they're the doorman or the janitor. That's the potential. That's the potential. My name's Rick Green. Thank you for having me here. I have a great day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Rick Green.